Good morning. This morning we extend a very sincere welcome to all in attendance, both in person and on our YouTube channel. We hope to get to know all of you better as you continue to join us on Sundays. Please stay for a gathering time immediately following services. There are so many treats back in the back. You won't want to miss it. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, which means that we are continuing our countdown to the celebration of Christ's birth. If you were listening to Betsy Hallman's opening song, the word said, light three candles to watch for Messiah. Friendly reminder, please place your cell phones in silent mode. Thank you. If you'd like to add your poinsettia gift to our Christmas garden around our altar, you'll need to get in your order this week, today preferably. You may place them in celebration for, in memory of, or just because you want our church looking its most festive for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. There's a green sheet that you can pick up on the uh, table out front in order to uh, sign up. Please hold the date for our church's 50th anniversary celebration. It's set for February 4th and 5th, uh, Saturday and Sunday. There'll be a dinner on Saturday night and a special service of celebration on that Sunday morning following. Um, please remember that each Wednesday at 1130, you're welcome to join for our Wednesdays in the Word Bible study for Advent. Everyone is welcome, just bring your Bible. A study book will be provided. You will, oh, we will continue this study on the Wednesday following Christmas, and then in January we'll start a new study on the Old Testament book of Job. So keep that in mind for your planning and scheduling. Uh, also, for those of you who are volunteers, the volunteer schedule has been updated with some changes for Christmas uh, Day and also for the month of January. We've added that to the schedule. Don't worry, you haven't got it yet because I didn't email it yet. I just finished it this morning, hot off the press. So I'll email it this afternoon to everybody so you can look for it. And on that note, if you're not already on my volunteer list and you would like to be, because we really need some more people to help us, especially as ushers and greeters and um, uh, readers for the uh, morning services, there's a form like this. And it's just a real simple one. If you haven't already filled it out, um, and would like to be added to the list of, of volunteers, please see me after church and I'll make sure you get a copy of this. If you've already filled it out, I don't need another one. Um, are there any other announcements? Yes, Tom. I just want to say thank you to everybody that contributed to the angel tree. Um, we had 23 tags, we got 23 bags, and they have all been delivered to the Salvation Army. Terrific, thank you. And, and thanks to you and June for the work that you've done on that um, special project. Um, so now it is time to prepare our hearts and minds and to invite God's Holy Spirit to inspire us as we listen to the prelude. Oh, one last thing. There is an addendum to the announcements. Um, uh, there's one change in the bulletin this morning. It's found on page 11 where it says we're going to be saying farewell to our good friends Susan and Gerald as they're moving to Tennessee. Um, that, as it turns out, that party, uh, that farewell and Godspeed will be had next Sunday, not today. So we'll keep that in mind for next week. Okay, now let's listen to the prelude. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Bobby. What a great way to uh, begin our time together in worship. Please turn to the brief order for confession and forgiveness as is found on the first page, page two of your worship bulletin. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, We've strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign by water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the uh, third verse of the carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give water to all who thirst, for he is our light and salvation. Blessed be God forever. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The first reading this morning is from the 35th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and bl blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it for it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up, up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be on their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 146. Please respond in the bold print. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven, heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will sign throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading this morning is from the fifth chapter of the book of James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late grains. 
you also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see, someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. You will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us put ourselves in a, a place of openness and willingness. God desires to speak to our spirit, to our soul today. So let's quietly prepare our hearts, dear and loving one. You look upon your world and you see much that is in disarray. But you have a plan that is ordered, thoughtful, and in place. We know that each of us, as we cast our whole thoughts and spirit upon you, that you will guide us. And when we feel depressed or sad, we just know for a fact that you have made a plan, that you've got this covered. You have decided to enter into the human story, into the person of your beautiful self, Jesus, Savior, Lord, friend. Come, Lord Jesus, as we look to the word today. In your name, amen. I suppose that one of the best years of my life was the year I graduated college and had heard the call to head off to seminary, not knowing what I was going there for, but somehow God had said, you need to do this. For me, it looked the future beautiful and with many good things away to me. I was proud of myself and I felt on top of the world. My family loved me and my mom, well, she was so proud because I was the last of five to graduate from university. She and my dad, who had been deceased by this time, were so insistent that the whole flock was going to make it through secondary and then college education. Maybe you have those happy days too when you think back about, gee, that was kind of a high point in my life. I remember that. And maybe there are more of those days and you once in a while find some comfort just going back there and reflecting a bit upon that time when things seem so certain, so real. And then, of course, we're balanced with all the times when life seems uncertain. Today, I want us to think about a time 
when our lives were going along good. And that was the way it was for me in the late 60s, entered into seminary. Those were happy days. But I have to tell you about a song that came out in the 1969, 70s, somewhere in there by none other than Miss Peggy Lee. I hated the song. My year was so full of hope and anticipation. I had all this ahead of me. And then Peggy Lee sang a song and the theme was this. Is that all there is? I don't know if any of you remember it. She'd go back and talk about the mishaps and terrible things that had happened to her life. And then she would say, is that all there is? She recalled dreams that had become nightmares and hopes that had turned to dust. And at the end of each verse, that awful question, is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friend, then let's keep dancing. Let's break out the booze and have a ball if that's all there is. The song is filled with what we call nihilism or nihilism, the belief that there is no real meaning to anything in this world. Philosophers have debated that subject, but no one could say it with so much sadness as that crooning voice of Peggy Lee, is that all there is? I have to ask you, well, I'm sure you're wondering, why am I bringing this up? This awful song from so long ago, which maybe you didn't think was so awful at all, but I did. Especially when I told you that it came at a time when my life was in a pretty happy place. I recall this song for you because you and I, we have to go visit a prison cell. Dark and dusty, rat infested, miserable. We have to go to a cell in a jail and there we will meet a man who had risen high and had dreamed high dreams. This man we see there is named John the Baptist. Perhaps you recall him from last Sunday's gospel. Ah, he was full of fire full of vigor and vitality, and the followers were in the thousands. He was on top of the world, but now he's been put in jail. The new day had dawned. Everything was there. Things would turn out perfect from now on. So it's with a mixture of confusion and relief that we have to wrestle with John on this Sunday morning's gospel. The Gospel of Matthew has me squatting in a prison cell on this third Sunday in Akron, offering uneasy company to a broken John the Baptist. Joy is not evident there behind the bars that hold the fiery man. Imprisoned for speaking the hard truth to authorities, John is in chains and in crisis, wondering if he had staked his life on the wrong promise and the wrong person. He presents is on the brink of asking, is that all there is? The Messiah, as far as John could tell, had changed nothing. He was supposed to bring justice, fairness, and order to the human institution, such that a tyrant like Herod would no longer sit on the throne, and a righteous man like John would no longer languish in a dark, cold prison cell. Jesus was supposed to finish the costly work John had begun. The one who came out in the wilderness to wield the ax, bring the fire, renew the world, but nothing, nothing at all has worked out as this disillusioned prisoner thought it would. And all he has left as he paces the cell is an anguished question for the would-be Messiah. Is that all there is? Are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? You see how filled with sadness and doubt that question really is? As he sits there, he had dreamed, he had built such high hopes. Is that all there is? It appears that John's journey had kind of taken a backward pathway from certitude to doubt, from boldness to hesitation, 
from knowing to unknowing, from heavenly light to jail cell darkness. Should we call this a case of spiritual failure on the part of John? But Jesus says, no. Instead, he responds to his cousin's pain question with perfect composure, gentleness, and I would say even relief. Okay, okay, John, go back, you disciples, and, and tell him what you see. I know, I know, his, his hopes are broken. He is living in a place where everything seems as though it's at a dead end. But Jesus said, go back and tell him. Go and speak with him as he, as he sits there looking out and seeing nothing that is worth hoping for. Jesus tells the disciples to go back and speak to the man who's just about ready to give it all up. And he says, tell him what your eyes see and your ears hear. Tell him those stories about people who, who are headed nowhere at all and now have hope in their hearts. Tell John that even though he says, is that all there is, there are many who are seeing another story. Tell him, tell John, who is ready to give it up, that he ought to hang in there and never, ever give up his hope. As I think about John receiving those words of encouragement from Jesus' disciples, I wonder if he believed it. All he knew was the darkness of that cell, probably no windows, just the darkness. And they came in and they said to him, don't give up. Don't give up. How many times have you had to hear that yourself, spoken to you by someone who cared so deeply. When you were at that place, when you were asking the same question as Peggy Lee did in her song, is this all there is? And someone, hopefully someone who you trusted, said to you very thoughtfully and kindly, don't give up. There is more. I will never, ever give up. Can you say that with me? I will never, ever give up. Is that, is that encouraging to you who, like all the rest of us, have had those bland moments when we look at the world and we say, it'll never change. People are people. They will treat each other badly since the beginning of time until the end. And then a voice says to us, like those voices spoke to John when he sat in that prison cell, don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up. When we hear the stories of Jesus, when we know the story as it's been told to us since we were little children, we have also taken that story with us and as sure as anything, it has run headlong into those times when doubt and despair has filled our hearts and we say, is that all there is? And those stories, the stories we come here to listen to week after week, they're beautiful stories. They tell each one of us something that we wouldn't hear perhaps anywhere else than we'd hear them from the Word of God spoken now so many centuries later that tells us, you doubters, you people who question, I tell you, don't give up. There will be a time when you will feel those doubts. There will be a time when you will shake your head and lose that sense of optimism. And Jesus says to each of us, don't give up. We know that God comes as a spirit who joins with our spirits and gives us a smile and warm encouragement. This is our greatest Christmas gift of all, to step into this world Embrace it. Know that it's real. We can't change it. We can't imagine it different and make it different that way. But we can always address inside. We can hear once more the beautiful words. There's a story to tell to the nations, a story of healing and help and hope. There's a story that must be communicated and sometimes you're the only one in the right place at the right time to tell it. 
We all know people who we sit down next to and they've lost so much. They've lost their hope, their dreams, and maybe we're the one who's going to say to them, in love and kindness, we're going to say to them, aren't we? We're going to say to them, aren't we? Don't give up. Amen. Let's sing verses one and four of Hark the Glad Sound. join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and ELC Global Mission. God, in your mercy. Amen. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. Especially we pray that ways may be found to end the scourge of red tide in our local waters. God, in your mercy. Amen. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice and racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict, especially the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy. Amen. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss, especially Beverly Arnold, Judy Berger, Mercer and Bobby Brown, Joyce Brown, Teresa Dewey, Lisa Perry Erickson, Carol and Don Chimitty, John Gregor, Cheryl Hagen, Tim Heil, Robin Hinton, Aaron Keyes, Joanne Larson, Jenny Meaden, Mike Moberg, June McCarthy, David Plant, Bill Reese, Mike and Carrie Richardson, Marilee Smith, Don and Scott Sweet, Christine Viscoso, and Ron Weyer. Strengthen and protect healthcare workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy. Amen. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have known loss, 
Especially we pray for the family of Norman Johnson as they grieve his passing. And lead us all to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's stand and share the peace with those around us this morning. Please be seated as the morning offering is received. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he gave thanks and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. Lord, remember us as in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You are welcome to come forward as the ushers invite you. And uh, here at the altar, you're welcome to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. Our table is open. Our table is welcome. And we invite you to join with us.
taste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. share the good news. <laughs>